Good evening, I'm Shannon Rutherford, the town planner. This is our zoning board of appeals meeting. I'm going to do a roll call attendance and then turn it over to our chair, Carrie Calhan. So for um, membership, I've got uh, Chris Cloud. Chris Cloud, are you here? Excuse me? Hear me? I'm here. Okay, oh, yeah, we can hear barely hear you. Uh, Ron Llewellyn. And just for the record, I'm not seeing Ron logged in at this particular moment. Uh, Sarah Nadim. Here. John Schoenhorn. Here. Steve Walsh. Here. Carrie Callahan. Here. And our alternates, John Healy. Present. Harry Marsh. Here. And Bob Wiener. Here. Okay, so Mr. Chair, we've got uh, one vacancy that you can seat an alternate for at your discretion. And the alternates available, I'm sorry, again, are? Uh, we've got all three. So there's uh, John Healy, Harry Marsh, and Bob Wiener. John Healy, please. Okay. Hello. Oh. Oh. It's I don't know. Do you have any more volume? Uh, uh, hi, Mark. We're going to uh, put you on mute for right now while we take care of some other business, okay? And then we'll, uh, when we announce your item, you can unmute your microphone. I want to hear all your secret information and stuff. Well, you'll be able to hear everything. We just are going to mute your microphone until mm -hmm. we're ready for your matter. All right, Mr. Chair, it's all yours. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 14, 2022 meeting of the Farmington Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, would the secretary read the notice into the record, please? Yes, I will. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals... Shannon? Excuse me. ...an online public yeah. hearing um, on Mon you did not Monday, know you November 14, 2022, at 7 o'clock p.m. on the following applications. Jennifer Rivera application for variance to reduce rear yard setback from 25 feet to 15 feet and to reduce side yard setback from 10 feet to 9 feet for location of above, above ground pool located at 39 West Meath Lane, R20 zone. Harold Mark Wilson application for appeal from zoning enforcement officer's order regarding 61 Eli Road, R80 zone. Interested parties are encouraged to participate in this online public hearing. The link to this meeting may be found on the Town of Farmington's website at www.farmington-ct.org backslash about hyphen Farmington backslash calendar hyphen meetings. A copy of this proposal is available online at www.farmington-ct.org backslash government backslash zoning hyphen board hyphen of hyphen appeals, or by calling the planning department at Farmington Town Hall at 860-675-2325, dated at Farmington, Connecticut, October 27, 2022. Thank you. And, and Shannon, I had understood that we also had on this, e this evening's agenda the application of Nicole Di Tommaso for a variance to reduce the side yard setback at Three Harvest Lane. Uh, correct, Mr. Chair. That's continued from the October meeting. The legal notice was read into the record at the October meeting. That's correct. Okay, thank you. So therefore, the first item I see on the agenda for tonight's meeting is the Nicole Di Tommaso application. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, That's sir. That's what I thought. Okay. May we hear from the applicant, please? Yes. Hi, we're here. Hey, Attorney Kevin Ferry here. Just um, this young man is going to be speaking. He uh, is a friend. He was a little nervous, and I told him just to speak from his heart, and I think he'll be fine. So nice to see you all. Here, here's Mr. Taylor. Hi, good evening, everyone. Hi, my name is Chris Taylor. I'm one of the uh, people applying for this um, variance change here. Um, I'm originally from St. Cloud, Florida. Um, I, I did meet my wife now, uh, who was originally raised and, um, and was born in Farmington area. 
Um, we both are now practicing resident physicians. Um, I, I'm practicing at UConn now, and uh, we, you know, we do plan to start our family. We bought this home, and uh, we were hoping to make some changes. Um, unfortunately, my wife couldn't be here because she was on call um, at the hospital. Um, so uh, if you guys have any questions regarding any of these changes, please let me know. If you could, Chris, if you could walk the commission through exactly to the best of your ability, what you're looking to do for your property and why you're requesting this change. So we've got the site plan up, I've got your house <coughs> plans, and I believe I've got an aerial as well. So if you could just step through a little bit, um, we understand you're not a contractor or developer, but to the best that you can step through what you're looking to do with the application. Of course, yeah. Um, so from my understanding, and I, I'm glad you mentioned that I'm not a contractor, but I, our goal was to add square footage to the back of the house. Um, we, we wanted to add six feet to the back side of the house um, across the whole width of the house. Um, you know, we are planning to start a family, so we wanted to make some expansions. Um, and then outside of that, if you have any more logistical questions regarding, I do have um, a friend uh, and family member here that can answer any further questions or clarifying questions regarding that. I'm just going to scroll through the rest of the slides because there was some additional information and some photos. So we'll just scroll through these so they're on the record. And that's court when we get to it, there's some correspondence that had come in as well. So perfect. And as you're scrolling through that, I will say that um, from my understanding, uh, we were planning to make renovations. And as we were continuing with those renovations, we we did uh, come across a lot of uh, some structural damage with uh, uh, rotting and, and uh, leaking uh, windows that were not sealed properly with some water damage. Um, and as we just continue to progress through our original renovation plans, um, walls just kept having to be knocked down because of the, the damage that we were coming across. And then, um, then we did eventually make these plans to add this square footage. As you can see, the property line is more um, very wide, but not very deep. Um, we do want to um, make that expansion, but continuing to widen the house didn't seem like optimal. So we just wanted to add to the back side of the house uh, as seen in the plans. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. And anything else at this point, or you want to turn it back over to the commission? Uh, I think now we can turn it back over to the commission. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. And what I would like to do, if we could, Shannon, is in the same order that we would do a roll call vote, I'll go through the members of the commission and give each an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, certainly. Would you, would you like me to uh, execute that? Yes, please. Certainly. Uh, Chris Cloud, any comments or questions for the applicant? Uh, good evening, Mr. Taylor. Nice to meet you. Uh, my for only question, I guess, is what is the current square footage of the house and what's the addition that you're trying to build? How much would it be in total? And if you could kind of share with us, how close are you to the proposed line, the back set back there? It's hard to see from this image. <clears throat> So uh, go ahead, Chris, if you, uh, no. Chris Taylor, if you can answer the square footage, I can help with a setback. Um, yeah, the Chris. square footage is currently at like 1,100. And we would go be adding, and it would be, the plan is for it to be around uh, 1890, like 1,900 square footage. Um, and then, sorry, well, the second part was, we, we plan from where the house currently sits to add six more feet in depth to the house across the whole house. Or I believe it might be eight. Eight, yeah, I think it's eight. So the existing, uh, the setback line, the 25 foot, so this is the rear property line where the 
uh, bearing and distance is shown. So that's the rear property line. There's a 25 foot rear setback line is shown uh, using the features in Adobe to, to demonstrate this. And then the request is to uh, reduce this setback. You can see it was touching the rear corner of the house. At this point, it would be approximately 17 feet. So that would give you the eight foot addition. Um, so that's 17 feet now from this rear corner to the rear property line rather than the required 25. Yeah, and, and to point out, it, it, it appears that only a portion of that is passing the, the setback point, um, the yard setback. So we would need to be taking a portion of that from that setback point, as you can see from that green square footage that we're adding to the house. Um, yeah. Anything further, Chris? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Uh, next would normally be Ron Llewellyn. I'm just checking to see. I okay. I don't see that he's called in, so we'll move along. Uh, Sarah Nadim, any questions or comments for the applicant? Hi, good evening. I was curious, um, is it just a stylistic preference that you would like to go back as opposed to continuing along? You indicated that um, you chose not to widen the house. Is it just like a, a preference that you had or was there some other reason? For the addition, I, I mean, I think it's a multitude of things. I think just in general, we want, we needed more space. We do plan to start a family. We wanted to have several children. Um, the original square footage was only 1,100. Um, so in that regard, we just wanted more space. Um, yeah, there was a stylistic component. Um, and then I think more importantly, just like money-wise, we wanted, you know, uh, for the money, we wanted to expand in this direction as opposed to others. So um, was it more expensive when you got plans to widen instead of going back? That's correct, yeah. And why was that? Is there anything on the property that was making it more expensive for you to widen versus going back in terms of leveling anything or septic or anything along those lines? Yeah, uh, from my understanding, it, it would have been more expensive in regards to digging for the foundation uh, if we were to widen as opposed to adding this depth to the house. Okay. And do you know why that was? Um, I can ask. And I do have a, a friend here that can help explain. Okay, so sorry, I just That's so okay. from our understanding, it was it was gonna be less expensive because there was gonna be less foundation to pour because of the existing basement of the house, and then additionally, we we had bought in a floor plan where we we were gonna need to do less customization from that floor plan. It was gonna fit with just this addition uh, on the back end right here. Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions right now. <clears throat> thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, John Schoenhorn is next for questions from the commission. Yeah, good evening. Um, I have a few questions and, and I'll first note, um, I went out myself and did a site inspection over the weekend and I'm wondering uh, if you have those. I sent the photographs to assistant town planner Daigle this morning. I'm wondering if, uh, oh, you, you have those pictures, yes. Yeah, so they're you can here. See, you, can, you can see my shadow there in the bottom left. Uh, or holding up my camera there in that picture right to the right of the dumpster. But um, so um, I guess the first question I had is um, the area that you wish to add on, as I understand it, if you can go back to the previous uh, image, is to the rear of the section where there is the cement slab, which I assume was where the garage used to be, the area where I now see a refrigerator. Am I correct about that? That's correct. Yeah. And so as you look deep into the into the where this house is, that cement slab would extend further. And that's where the new master bedroom and, and bathroom would be. And then from that back end, that, that would continue across the width of the house until there's a, a corner section that we weren't going to add uh, more foundation to. 
Right. They have and, the rear of this house right here. All right. And um, could I, could you, um, Shannon, show the other images that I, uh, the next one after that? Um, the, you're aware, I'm looking at the image again, you see my shadow there on the bottom. Um, this is the image that shows a white uh, trailer parked uh, in the, in that part of the lawn. This is the, 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 this would be the side of the yard which you decided not to construct. Is that correct? Not to go to the left of the street. Am I correct about that? Correct. Right. And um, there are a number of, of uh, large conifers that we see behind your property there that act as somewhat of a buffer to the neighbor on um, Harvest Lane, correct? That, that is correct. I mean, well, on Wells Drive. Yeah. Wells Drive, right? That yeah. house we see through the trees there is on Wells Drive? That's right. Um, what were you planning on doing with any of these trees? There's uh, nothing to be done with those trees. That we plan to keep them there. And um, the you indicated that it would be more expensive to have this house uh, expand uh, sideways, laterally, as opposed to to the rear. Are you taking a consideration that where the um, the garage was was is a slab? floor, there's no basement below that. Am I correct about that? That is correct. Were you planning on digging down to make your the, make the area where the slab garage floor was into a full basement? No, we were not. And, and as I also understand, um, when you talk about add-on, this is basically going to be a complete new construction since there are only two wall, partial walls left for this property, correct? I believe that, yeah, that is correct. And uh, there, you, you, you're you aware that one of your neighbors has filed an objection, right? I am aware, yeah. So I'm gonna ask you just, this will be your opportunity to, can you just respond to their concern about the elevation of your property compared to theirs and how this uh, higher foundation wall in the back will impact them and how you plan on addressing that? Yeah, um, and I'm just going to confer with uh, Logan. Do you mind if I chime in? Yes, go ahead. This is a uh, my father, my father-in-law. Well, if somebody, I think, Mr. Chairman, if someone else is going to speak, they're going to have to. Um, I don't know if it's how you want to handle this and have him speak after and identify himself or do it in the middle of the questioning? How do you prefer I think to handle it? would that? make most sense if he has information responsive to your question at this juncture to have him provide his input now. Okay. All right. Ahead, uh, Mr. Tomaso. Yes, sir. Well, the, the fact okay, that... Okay, if you could, Mr. DiTomaso, if you could, for the record, please, your full name and your address so we have that identified for the record, please. Thank you. Sure, it's Sebastian DiTomaso, and it's 17 Judson Lane, Farmington. Thank you. So I think um, what's missing in this and is no longer there is originally there was a 14-foot deep deck that was attached to the back of the house. So when I we put in the original request for the addition, we were either gonna come out to the front of the garage or we we're gonna come out to the back of the garage. So as long as we were in the footprint, we didn't think it was a problem. So instead we dismantled the 14 foot deep deck, which was the same height I know he's asking for a foundation wall, but it was all covered in grids and it was a mess. It was a jungle back there. So the depth in the tree line and everything was based on the 14 foot deep deck. We're asking for an eight foot addition. So we're actually six feet under what was existing on the site. And then the difference is when I spoke to Mr. Daigle, is that we were staying in the footprint 
of all the setbacks and all the items that were already existing on the site. But he did mention a deck slash porch is not the same as a full foundation. So that's why we're here today. Um, and I, I guess then my follow-up question is, I believe that the neighbor had indicated that through his kitchen window, the, um, or a kitchen slider, he's going to see the, um, the, the foundation is going to be his view and that the, the room will be looking down into his kitchen. Could you just address that concern that he raised in his correspondence? Yeah, I mean, if it was a concern and I'm all about privacy, an additional shrub would suffice that, but it's still eight, it's still six feet back from before. So I don't understand why the actual addition is in question when there was an existing deck that was even closer to his land, closer to his window. And I don't know what window he's talking about because I don't see a kitchen. I just see the side of his garage with a stairwell on it. So, you know, the, the actual kitchen or the view of the kitchen has to be well over a hundred feet. It's not 20 feet off the set light line. All right, thank you. Next. Uh, Steve Walsh, any questions? Uh, no, uh, no questions. Okay, uh, John Healy. No questions beyond what's already been asked. Thank you. Okay, Harry Marsh. No questions. Bob Wiener. My questions have already been addressed also. Okay, Mr. Chair, I've seen uh, Mr. Llewellyn, I think, has called in. I don't know he at what time. Just... He texted me a moment ago indicating that he was trying to log on and having some difficulty. On this particular application, John Healy is the alternate establishing the quorum. Correct. And I believe I'm next with regard to whether or not there are questions. Yes, sir. And my question directed to the applicant and to Mr. DiTomaso, his representative, I think was at least partially answered. But if you look from the back of the house with the proposed addition on it, what aspect of the neighbor's house, the neighbor who is objecting, does it face? I believe it's behind the trailer. That white trailer in this picture. Okay, and that's the neighbor's property behind the white trailer? Correct, on the other opposite side of the trees. Okay, thank you. Nothing. Yeah, and I can clarify. So where the house is, which is to the right of this picture, the addition on the rear of that house would be just looking facing his backyard and his, like, uh, I think he has, like, an, a, like, a garage or something back there. Um yeah, so you can see through that one of that. Um, so he has his house right there that you can see above the number 26. And then he has that addition slash garage where the number 26 is. The addition would be even south of that in the picture. Um, okay. So it would be facing his backyard. Okay, and I see. You can see the additional eight feet will still be behind that tree line that you mentioned that divides our property. Um, and sure, you can look through the tree line, see the corner of his house, but it, it will be no way facing toward his house. And I see what you mean. You've addressed my, my concern. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. And this picture also doesn't have the full deck that was on the house. I understand. So this picture is a few couple of years off. And to the extent there is a, and forgive my aging eyes if that's the problem, but to the extent there is this rectangular protrusion off the back of the house, what is that? Is that the deck? That's the deck, but the deck went off. There was, that is a concrete deck that we haven't even touched. And there's no way that that could be removed without a ball and chain. So that's staying there, but adjacent to it, on the back corner that you don't see where we're doing the addition is that deck is actually 14 feet deep that runs all the way to the back end of the house. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. 
Is there anyone else here who wishes to speak in favor of the applicant? We have seen, and perhaps we should have it read into the record. There was an objection from, and, well, let me ask it this way. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against the application? Okay. Um, all right, Mr. Chair, if it's okay, we'll do the written correspondence because I've got it right here. And then we'll get that into the record. Excuse me as I zoom in. Some of these, they're not all the same scale, so I apologize. Uh, for the 14th, it was owners of Five Harris. So this is support. Uh, so this is an uh, uh, email we received in support from the owners of Five Harvest Lane. Um, okay. And then... Do you want me to read it into the record or not? As No, it's been up on... It, we typically don't read them in verbatim. Okay. We just, we've got them on the screen and we just know whether it's in opposition and it's been, it's been shared with the applicant, shared with the commission. Um, and this app, uh, letter is in opposition and this is not, it's just uh, Douglas from Douglas Lead. And is it Lead or Leal? I don't know. I think it's Leal. But anyway, in any event, that is from the owner of the property at 26 Wells Drive, correct? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, there you Douglas Leal. Leal. Okay, so those are the two written correspondence. And then for anyone that's called in, if you've called in to offer comment regarding this application, please raise your hand using the feature in Zoom and you will be acknowledged to address the commission, whether you have a, a question or comment regarding this application. Okay, one more time, if anyone is called in regarding the application for three Harvest Lane, please raise your hand using the feature in Zoom to address the commission. Okay, Mr. Chair, there are no hands raised. <clears throat> now that the there has been an opportunity uh, to speak in favor of and in opposition to the application, um, I believe the public portion of the hearing is now closed. And may we have a motion? Actually, I will make the motion and I will move to approve the application of Nicole DiTomaso for a variance to reduce the rear yard setback from 25 feet to 17 feet for an addition to the house located at three Harvest Lane, R20 zones. Second. Second. Discussion. I mean, and if we could please go in order again as we did with the questioning, Shannon. Uh, certainly. Uh, Chris Cloud, any comment? Uh, no comment. Uh, I support the application. Sarah Nadim. Other than um, the cost effectiveness, I'm curious to hear what other board members' thoughts are on um, the hardship or if the applicant can explain that a bit further at the appropriate time. Okay, uh, John Schoenhorn. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm inclined to vote no here. Um, because of the, I don't, I don't believe the cost issue is the hardship. I am concerned because I did go and, and examine the property that it will be, it is a cement wall. It is a lot longer than, a, than in my view, than a, a deck, even if it's lattice, it is a solid wall. Uh, nobody addressed his, the, the neighbor's concern on, wet, on wells regarding the, um, at 26 wells regarding uh, dish, uh, runoff. Uh, that's not our main, our main issue here. It has to do with whether there's a hardship that uh, is necessary for a variance. And I'm, I, I will state categorically that if the application had sought a, a lateral variance to maybe be a little bit closer to the a street setback, because this appears to be if not a double lot, certainly a rather large corner lot, 
I would have been uh, favorably inclined to that application, either to the left or right of the main structure. But um, I don't believe that the that the applicant has uh, addressed a sufficient hardship. So I'm inclined to vote uh, now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Steve Walsh. Uh, no comment. John Healy. No comment. Mr. Chair. I agree that the fact that the cost of building out in another direction does not create a substantial hardship, but I am convinced that there is adequate hardship created by both the configuration and the slope of the lot. Uh, and therefore I support the application and would not have made the motion if I didn't. But I believe that concludes the comment portion and that we should now vote uh, with the regular members voting in order and John Healy voting as the alternate on this application. Uh, correct. And you'd like a roll call vote, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Okay. I'm just going to note, uh, unfortunately, Christopher, now that the uh, hearing has closed, there is no further comment from the applicant or from the public. I note that your hand's raised and the commission, the board at this time. The public hearing it. is closed. Yeah, so there's no further comment. So roll call vote on the motion uh, to approve. Chris Cloud. Aye. Uh, Sarah Nadim. No. John Schoenhorn. No. Uh, Steve Walsh. Aye. Uh, John Healy. Aye. And Carrie Callahan. Aye. Okay. It passes four two. Okay. Thank you. I show the second. I and is um, Ron Llewellyn has he been able to join the meeting? I know he was uh, trying. You no, know, he's been in and out. Quick times is not on right now. Okay, so it would seem at this point he's not on. It's it, yeah, he's been in and out, Mr. Chair, and at the current moment he is not showing. Right, so we need to have an alternate appointed for this, um, the second application as well. Uh, correct. Um, for the second application, let's see, the alternates here are John Healy, Harry Marsh, and Bob Weiner. And Bob, uh, let's point Harry Marsh as the alternate for the second item on this evening's agenda, please. Certainly. The second item is Jennifer Rivera's application for a variance to reduce the side yard setback from 25 to 15 feet and the rear yard setback from 10 feet to nine feet for an, under, for an above ground pool. May we hear from the applicant, please? Um, and that's not our phone number. Huh. Apparently not, Mr. Chair. Uh, it would seem that the applicant has failed to call in for the meeting this evening. Oh, so unusual. It is. Um, my understanding is she has her hands full, so there may have been something that came up. Um, do you want to just okay. check your email real quick? Yeah, I did. It didn't have anything. No emails from her. Okay, we don't have any emails from the uh, from the applicant. All right. Um, well, then we, we can. I suggest we can either just mark that portion of the hearing off or continue it to next month's meeting. Uh, we can, if you're so inclined, we could move on to. Uh, the next matter on the agenda, see if she calls in in the interim. And I then if no not, then... let's move on to the appeal hearing. We are charged in our quasi judicial function with the determining the appeal from the zoning enforcement's order regarding 61 Ely Road R80 zone. I have a distant recollection of doing this once before and that the first order of business was the presentation of the town's case. And it seems to be what you're putting on the screen. Correct. 
Yes, I sir. understand that Mr. Daigle will be presenting the town's position. Correct. And Mr. Wilson, um, yeah. or Mr. Are, Chair, are, if, are we if on? You are, yes. So what we are yes. going to do, um, we will. Yes, sir, Mr. Callahan had indicated you've done this once before with us. No, 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 sir, no, no, not, not with, you. with you. No, with somebody else. I was just. I was merely referring. okay. I'm, I, I apologize. Was, I thought you were saying that you had we'd done this once before. So I wanted to no, no, no. My my I, my I, I the ring to say sure. we've only I, effed up one time. So. No, no, no. I, I'm saying I was just talking about the order in which the cases are presented. All I was saying was that the town's representative, Mr. Daigle, will present his case first. And by the way, the alternate on this matter because the last one didn't take place. Well, why don't we do this? Um, um, the, as to the appeal from the order of the zoning enforcement officer, I'll appoint Mr. Wiener as the alternate who will sit as a regular member. And then if the Rivera matter does uh, make its way back onto the agenda, Harry Marsh will remain the alternate on that matter. So if we may hear from Mr. Daigle regarding 61 Ely Road first. And then, um, of course, Mr. Wilson, you'll have an opportunity to respond. Thank you. All right. Uh, good evening, members of the board. Uh, as stated, I'll be representing the town in this matter, acting as a zoning enforcement officer for this. Uh, so to start off, uh, Farmington Zoning Appeals, the Board of Appeals, Appeal of 61 Eli Road, Cease and Desist, uh, public hearing. Uh, this presentation was submitted to all the board members, as well as the uh, four exhibit documents uh, that were listed below. Um, if anyone would like to see those at any point, uh, we do have them available, if anyone is interested. Next. Thank you. So this evening, you'll be hearing an appeal of the decision of the official charge with enforcement of the zoning regulations pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 8-6 powers and duties of Board of Appeals. The Zoning Board of Appeals should have the following powers and duties. To hear and decide appeals where it is alleged that there is an error in any order, requirement, or decision made by the official charged with the enforcement of this chapter or any bylaw, ordinance, or regulation adopted under the provisions of this chapter. The violation in question this evening, uh, tree clearing along the Ridgeline Protection Zone without the required special permit, just to clarify for the board, uh, this is not an application for a variance, so hardship is not a consideration in your decision. Uh, the ZBA this evening is acting in a quasi-judicial capacity, and the question for the board is, was the clearing of the trees at 61 Eli Road a violation of Article 2, Section 26 of the Zoning Code? Next, please. Just for some background on the property, uh, this is a topographic map of the property. Uh, the property at 61 Eli Road is located along the Talcott Notch Ridge. Uh, the portion, the property and a portion of the home at 61 Eli Ridge is located within the Ridgeline Protection Setback Area. Uh, on this map is a topo topographic map. Uh, the Ridgeline is shown in red. Uh, the 75-foot Ridgeline Setback is shown in yellow. And the 150-foot Ridgeline Setback is shown in green. This information was obtained from the Farmington GIS data. Uh, here's an aerial photo of the property with topographic lines from the spring of 2016, which is available on our public GIS server. Next, please. And uh, this is the special permit application that was filed when the home was constructed in 2002. Again, the ridge line is shown as well as the 75 foot and 155 150 foot setbacks. Uh, could you go to the next slide, Shane? Mm -hmm. This just highlights those setbacks in, in the same red, yellow, and green colors. Um, the existing home, which is shown along the ridge, the yellow line, um, that home was demolished as part of the special permit application, and a new home was constructed to the east behind the 150 foot uh, bridge line setback. So on September 21st, 2022, the Planning and Zoning Office received a complaint from a resident indicating that clearing and apparent construction had occurred along the ridgeline and was visible from Town Farm Road. 
The below picture was included with the complaint. Staff has added addresses as reference points for additional photos. So you can see 77 Eli Road, 61 Eli Road, which is the property in question, and 55 Eli Road. Next slide, Chan. Thank you. Uh, this second picture was taken from Google Street View, dated June 2019. Again, you can see 77 Eli, 61 Eli, and 55 Eli. And then the following slide shows these two photos in comparison. I know they're different quality, but you should be able to um, understand that the address points. <clears throat> so on uh, September 26th, staff made initial inspection from the road and driveway to confirm the location of the clearing as the complaint did not know the address specifically, so staff had to go up and verify. Uh, staff made contact with the owner on the 26th. Uh, the property owner confirmed that work had been, been performed and confirmed that cutting had occurred of allegedly dead trees and permitted staff to inspect the work that had been completed. On September 27th, staff performed inspection of the clearing area, documented visible stumps, and photographed remaining brush and trees. On September 29th, a formal cease and desist was issued via certified mail and regular mail. The full letter was included with this presentation as Exhibit A. Next, please. Thank you. Um, on October 5th, the property owner indicated their desire to appeal the decision to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Based on the timeframes involved, the property owner was given until October 12th, 2022 to file an appeal, and the appeal was received on that date. Again, Section 8-6, Powers and Duties of the Board of Appeals. The Board of Zoning Board of Appeals should have the following powers and duties to hear and decide appeals where it is alleged that there is an error in any order, requirement, or decision made by the official charged with the enforcement of this chapter or any bylaw, ordinance, or regulation adopted under the provisions of this chapter. Tonight is the required hearing on the appeal. The Board can either uphold reverse or modify the cease and desist with an affirmative vote of four out of five members. The town's position. Connecticut General Statute section 8-1AA defines a trap rock ridge in the ridgeline setback area. Included in that definition is Talcott Mountain in Farmington. Section 8-2C allows municipalities to have regulations establishing development restrictions on tap rock ridges and states in any municipality where a trap rock ridge as defined in section 8-1AA or an amphibolite ridge as defined in section 8-1AA is located, the regulations may provide for development restrictions in ridgeline setback areas as defined in said section. The regulations may restrict quarrying and clear cutting except that the following operations and uses shall be permitted in ridgeline setback areas as of right. Number one, emergency work necessary to protect life and property. And number two, any non-conforming uses that were in existence and that were approved on or before the effective date of the regulations adopted under this section. And three, selective timbering, grazing of domesticated animals and passive recreation. The town of Farmington adopted the original protection zone on July 26, 1999. 61 Eli Road is located along the Metacomet Ridge of Talcott Mountain and within the ridgeline setback. As stated in the cease and desist, the property owner had filed a special permit to demolish the existing home and construct a new home in 2002 within the ridgeline setback. In 2007, a notice about the ridgeline protection zone was filed on the land records, and in 2018 and 2020, the planning department sent letters to all property owners to remind them of the ridgeline protection zone. It is the town's position that the work conducted, one, did not meet the exemptions under Connecticut General Statute 8-2C for emergency work necessary to protect life or property, and number two, did not meet the exemptions for selective clear-cutting as defined in the regulations for zoning. Article 2, Section 26A, Definitions of the Ridgeline Protection Zone, defines emergency work as emergency work necessary to protect life or property, Emergency work shall include, but not be limited to, the removal or trimming of dead or dangerous trees. Prior to the commencement of such activity, a plan for conducting all emergency work shall be submitted to and approved by the planning department. Clear cutting is defined as follows. Clear cutting means the harvest of timber, 
in a fashion which removes all or substantially all trees over two inches in diameter at breast height, 4.5 feet above grade, from any 10 square foot area. Selective clear cutting is defined as follows. Selective clear cutting means the removal or alteration of trees within the ridgeline setback area exclusively for the purpose of establishing, maintaining, or enhancing a view from an existing or proposed residence. Next slide, please. Section, subsection C, permitted uses. Selective clear cutting is permitted subject to the following conditions. Such clear cutting shall be limited to the cumulative removal or alteration of no more than 10 trees less than 10 inches in diameter, 4.5 feet above grade, from the effective date of adoption of this regulation, or shall be done in accordance with a plan prepared by an arborist and approved by the Farmington Planning Department. B, such clear cutting shall not result in the removal of all trees within a 100 square foot area. C, such clear cutting shall not result in the creation of large treeless gaps along the top of the ridgeline. And D, such clear cutting shall not result in the exposure of large areas of the building as viewed from below the ridgeline setback. Section, subsection E, uses allowed only by special permit clear cutting as defined in the regulations. So the next few slides will be some aerial photos and then some photos of the property. Um, this aerial photo was obtained from October 20th, 2021. Uh, the approximate area of clearing is shown in red. The clearing occurred after the state, so this is prior to the clearing. And then this next slide, this photo was obtained on September 9th, 2022, and shows the approximate area of the clearing. And the following slide, uh, this shape is shown as a little over 14 and a half thousand square feet of area. And these are the two photos side by side, side by side from October of 2021 and September of 2022. Next slide. Uh, the largest gap in tree removal is approximately 100 feet in, in width. Uh, the next few slides will show uh, trees that staff the stumps that Trek staff was able to locate that were greater than 10 inches in diameter. Uh, you have one at one foot 9.5 inches. Number two is at one foot three inches. Number three is one foot three inches. And number four is one foot 1.5 inches. Next slide. Uh, tree number five is at one foot six inches. Tree number six is at one foot. Tree number seven is at 11 inches. Tree number eight is at 1, 9, 1 foot 9 inches. I'm sorry. Tree number nine is at 1 foot 5.5 inches. And tree number 10 is at 1 foot 5 inches. And lastly, tree number 11 was at 11 foot 1 inch. Tree number two was at 1 foot 3 inches. Tree number 13 was at 1 foot 9.5 inches. And tree number 14 was 2 feet in diameter. So the next few photos will show a, an aerial photo of the property, uh, the location I was standing when the photo was taken, and the direction. Uh, so this photo was taken facing west towards the ridgeline. Next photo. As you, you can see, the polar grounds in the background. So this is looking down the slope to see the brush. The next slide is facing north along the fence line under the trees, as you can see here. The next slide is facing south, parallel to the home, towards the ridge line. The next photo is facing southwest at the edge of the former home. And the last photo is facing northwest towards the ridge line. This next photo uh, shows the clearing from Town Farm Road and the location it was taken, which is the entrance to the polo grounds, which is approximately 5,700 feet away from the property on Eli Road. And this photo was taken by myself from the polo grounds. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, the town's conclusion resulting in the cease and desist. We believe the work was not emergency in nature to remove dead or dying trees, as many of the felled trees still had vegetation. While some trees may have been dead or dying, no discussion was held with the planning staff 
prior to work commencing in accordance with Section 26C permitted uses. One, emergency work necessary to protect life or property. Emergency work shall include, but not be limited to the removal or trimming of dead or dangerous trees. Prior to the commencement of such activity, a plan for conducting all emergency work shall be submitted to and approved by the planning department. Next slide. Further, uh, when the zoning regulations do permit selective clear cutting as defined in the regulations, as defined for the purpose of establishing, maintaining, or enhancing a view from an existing or proposed residence, such work must be reviewed by staff and exceeded the regulations as such. Such clear ship cutting shall be limited to the cumulative removal or alteration of no more than 10 trees less than 10 inches in diameter, 4.5 feet above grade, from the effective date of adoption of this regulation, July 26, 1999, or shall be done in accordance with a plan prepared by an arborist and approved by the Farmington Planning Department. The property owner did not contact the planning department prior to work commencing. Of the sum staff was able to locate, 14 were greater than 10 inches in diameter at the base. B, such clear cutting shall not result in the removal of all trees within a 100 square foot area. The approximate area of disturbance is estimated to be 14,000 square feet. C, such clear cutting shall not result in the creation of large treeless gaps along the top of the ridge line. The largest gap in tree coverage is approximately 100 feet in width. And D, such clear cutting shall not result in exposure of large areas of the building as viewed from below the ridge line setback. The removal of vegetation exposed a sufficient area to warrant a complaint from a property approximately a mile away from the clearing and is visible from Town Farm Road. And lastly, as the work conducted exceeds the regulations for selective clear cutting, such work clearly falls under the zoning regulation definition of clear cutting. Clear cutting means the harvest of timber in a fashion which removes all or substantially all trees over two inches in diameter at breast height, 4.5 feet above grade, from any 10 square foot area, for which no special permit was filed with the Town Planning and Zoning Commission. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't know you're going to get me out of this. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wilson, would you like to be heard, sir? Mr. Wilson, you'll need to unmute your microphone. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just have a question. Will the commissioners be able to uh, inquire of either the uh, staff presentation or the respondent in this? Yes, go, yes, of course. I thought it appropriate to, to hear from both sides and then each member of the commission can direct questions to either the town's representative or Mr. Wilson as he or, she, she's, as he or she sees fit. Thank but you. I'd like to hear from Mr. Wilson first. Yeah, I'm back now. Okay, good. And I Mr. Want. Wilson, are you speaking on your own behalf or do you have somebody else speaking for you or some combination thereof? I am speaking on behalf of my wife and myself. Thank you. Go ahead and make your presentation, please. Yeah, uh, first off, uh, I am not necessarily um, appealing the cease and desist order. I agree with that. I am uh, aware of the original ordinance as it comes to cutting trees for new homes and for de development, but I messed up and cut trees down recently um, and cleared some property without having first the approval of the town. The trees and the brush that was cut down were trees that were diseased trees that were dying, trees that had fallen, trees that were damaging our property, and the other was brush that had grown weeds that had grown in front of our property. And we had not cleared in the last five or six years. Um, I think our home is unique on the mountain from any other home in that the home that originally was built was built in the 1970s. When we purchased the property in 2001, 
there was an A-frame that existed on the property, uh, it, which is shown on page two of our document. Uh, the view of the original home and the property from Town Farm Road is also shown on page three, showing in contrast to what the town has shown from their picture of the home from Town Farm Road. In 2001, according to the town, if I desired to build a new home or to expand the home that existed on the property, I was not allowed to keep nor destroy the home that was there. So as a compromise was made with the Planning Zoning Commission, that I would remove the top floor of the original A-frame structure that's shown on page three. We would build a 15 foot, so if you, maybe the easiest, if you go to my, my page, I think it's uh, page eight of my document. There you go. So we would remove the top floor of the original A-frame property, which is up at the top. We would build a 15 foot concrete double wall. We'd raise the existing yard to the height of the original second floor of the original home, backfill the wall with 10 feet of fill, build a 12 foot wide, six foot deep retaining wall around that tree that existed between the original home and my new home. Plant three trees in front of the 12 foot wall, which was down where the pool and the deck was on the existing home. You construct a 75 foot long, eight foot high underground footing that would connect the two foundations because you're not allowed to have two separate homes or two separate dwellings or two separate rooms on the same property. They had to be connected by foundation. So we went to significant effort, a significant cost to maintain the view. So we cut the A-frame off of the A-frame home, which is shown on the top of this picture, raised the yard 12 feet so as to, from Town Farm Road, if you go to the towns, I think exhibit, C, perhaps, uh, page two. Go to their page two. You can see at the lower picture where we raised the footprint of the house, if you will. No, the lower picture. Go down right there. So you can see where we cut the top off the A-frame house. If you look at the uh, the second, the second to the to your far right, that first tree hump on your right. So in this picture, though, right here. There. Yeah. If you look at that solid wood area, the solid dark line, that was the that was the top floor. That was the second floor of the original house. So we raised our yard to that height so that when you looked at the view of our new home from Town Farm Road, it took you over the, the first floor of the existing house into what would have been the second floor of our home to help diminish the effect of our home on the view from Town Farm Road. And if you look in front of that house or go back to my page, I'm trying to get there, I'm sorry, I apologize. Yeah, that's okay. Thought I had it on here, maybe I don't. If you go to page, 
Well, let's go to page three of my exhibit. So if you look at my page three, uh, that is a home in 2001 from Town Farm Road. So I've, I've had some phone calls recently from neighbors asking if I put solar panels on my house. So if you look at the photo on the right, that is the A-frame home. What you see is a solid piece of white is snow on the roof of that A-frame home, which is no longer there. What you see below that white are the windows, 20 foot high windows on the part of the existing home that still exists today. And if you look below it, you see snow, which pretty much indicates there's no ground cover. There's a, a couple trees down below. And if you look to the picture to the left, it shows you the amount of ground that was open. I call it uh, uh, sparsely covered with trees when we bought the home in 2001. If you go to the next photo, which is poorly taken, that's the home as it exists today. If you look in the middle of that, which looks like a black square right in the middle, right there, that's the windows from the A-frame home that existed back in 1970. Those windows were visible in 2001 when we bought the home and they're visible today. If you go to page seven of my exhibit, that is a picture of Ackerland window cleaning <laughs> who happened to clean the windows inside that home, inside that building where the windows are. And you can see looking out, there are no trees, no growth, nothing in front of those windows, except down below. What has happened was over the last five or 10 years, we did not maintain our yard the way we should have. We had weeds that grew eight, 10, 12 feet tall, and we cut them down. In the last, I think I, th I said in here since 2020, we've cut over 50 trees down in our yard that were dead or dying. Yes, I cut some trees down in the backyard. Some of these were in the ridgeline area. Some of these, or most of these, were dead or dying. I have a couple of trees that actually right now, because of the windstorm last night, have lost limbs. We have trees that have dropped limbs and broken through our decking. We cut a two foot tree down that was actually growing through our decking on this home. I'm not denying that we cut some trees down. I'm not denying that we did not get the town's permission. I am saying I was not aware that to maintain my yard, and to maintain a view that I purchased, I had to maintain or get the town's permission to cut down weeds and cut down any uh, dead trees. We did cut some trees down. I believe that they were all dead or dying. My tree expert at the time only cut trees. He said they were dead or dying. And we did not do anything to clear cut. If you go back to page six, one page forward, you see a picture of, of our yard today. And below it, you see a picture of our children and other children playing in the same area of our yard in 2010. You can see that we did not cut any treetops down. There's nothing that's really significantly changed. Uh, one of those trees, that large tree right in the middle, is gone. It died from 
whatever killed all the other trees in our yard. I don't know if it's elm disease or what it was. We've had some trees that recently even fell because a bear climbed up in the tree. I'm not denying that we cut trees down without permission. All I'm saying is that we did not clear cut for purpose of a view. We clear cut for maintenance. Um, I I'm really have nothing else to say to that. Um, I, 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 I throw myself at your mercy with that. I, I, we did not know that we had to have permission to cut down trees that were dead or dying. Um, I think that the pictures that we show illustrate what the home was when we bought it, what the home was as it exists today. There are no more trees cleared than what existed in 2001 when we bought the property. Um, we did cut down trees without the town's permission. Uh, we'll never do that again. Um, but outside of that, um, I don't know that there were any significant trees uh, greater than 10 inches that were cut, except for one that was growing on the left-hand side through my deck um, that was splitting the deck and dropping limbs on the deck that we cut down that was what I would call a living tree. The rest were all dying or dead. Um, I'll leave it at that. With that, if we may go in order, the same order, please, and uh, questions from members of the commission that may be directed either to the town's representative or to Mr. Wilson, please. Certainly. Uh, Chris Cloud. Sure, I guess this will be to, to Garrett. Um, I'm understanding that um, we're looking at a cease or desist, but what is the jeopardy that attaches to this um, at the end of the day? Is there a fine? Is there some sort of penalty that we're seeking? I'm not clear about what the adjudication of this is, other than telling him not to do this again. Can you explain that a little bit further? Yes, so it, it's uh, outlined in the cease and desist, but I'll just read it, uh, the paragraph um, from the cease and desist letter. <clears throat> quote, you may appeal this order to the Farmington Zoning Board of Appeals in accordance with Section 8-7 of the Connecticut General Statutes within 10 days of the date of this letter, September 29th. Forms for the appeal are available online or in the zoning office. Failure to submit a special permit application with a restoration plan, either 30 days from receipt of this letter or 10 days after a decision by the Zoning Board of Appeals, if you decide to appeal this decision, will result in the commencement of fines, $150 a day, and referral of this matter to the town attorney for immediate legal action. So the town is requesting that um, if the board elects to uphold uh, or, or modify the decision, um, that a special permit be filed with the Planning and Zoning Commission, Town Plan and Zoning Commission, to restore uh, the vegetated area. Um, we've done this with other properties along the ridgeline that have violated the regulation um, where they've submitted a, a restoration plan um, to, to restore the vegetation to that area over time. Unfortunately, usually you cannot use full-grown trees in these areas um, because of the ledge involved. The trees have adapted over time to grow there, um, so they usually end up being a little smaller, but we usually leave that up to an arborist to determine what species would be best for this area. And the locations. Thank you. That's very um, helpful to clarify um, the questions that I certainly have. And Mr. Wilson, this is um, Chris Cloud. Y your your rationale was just to maintain, in your mind, uh, some of the vegetation that had had grown and to remove the trees as what because they were obstacles or because they were all dead and that you're not looking to expand the property at this point, correct? You're just looking to help me understand what your purpose of cutting them down was other than the fact that you allege that they're dead. Yeah, I appreciate that question. Um, obviously when we bought the property, we bought it because it had a view. And if you look at this page six, I believe that's still sitting here, Oh, no, no, go back to the, the two homes. Um, 
right there. So if you look at what we had above and what we built, we went to extreme cost. We went to, we jumped through all kinds of hoops. We were not allowed, when we built this, our new home, we were not allowed to add on to the existing home, nor were we allowed to keep the existing home. If that makes any sense to you whatsoever. According to the Ridgeline Ordinance in 2001 and 2002, we could not keep the existing home, nor could we tear it down. So we had to come to a compromise where planning and zoning let us cut the top floor off of the existing home, raise our yard 12 feet with two 12 foot or a 10 foot and a 12 foot concrete retaining wall, build a 75 foot wall, concrete wall footing back to the new home. The tree you see in the middle of that picture, we built a 15 foot diameter by six foot deep well to keep that tree. We were forced to keep a tree on the other part of the yard that was already split in half, but held together by wire, but the town made us keep it. And we planted three uh, or four, I'm sorry, evergreen, I forget the, the variety, in front of the wall. If you go down a little bit, the front retaining wall, they could be seen. So when I built a stone wall facing Town Farm Road, you couldn't see the stone wall because of the three or four trees I was forced to plant. So we went through all kinds of hoops and spent tons of money to try to maintain the view. I tried to be the best neighbor I could to the town because I knew the town didn't want to see my, my home from the valley. So we did the best we could to do that. So when you look from Town Farm Road up over the old existing home, you basically looked over the roof of my house. In front of the home, if you look at these pictures, you see what I call a yard on the right-hand side of these, these homes. That is where the original uh, uh, Tom, Tom Kyler, and I forget his girlfriend's name, they sat there within a 40 foot grass area and watched deer being born. We went back this year and cut weeds down that had grown from that grass level up over the 20 foot high windows. And I showed that in page seven. This shows when you look out the window, there are no trees. There's no vegetation in front of that. That's from 2010. If you go to page six, you see on the top picture is this year, and the bottom picture is 2010. You see that we have not cut treetops down. We've not cut anything down to maintain a view or to create a view. All we've done is cut trees that were dead. I, and I'll admit we cut down trees that were dead. We cut down trees that were dying. We cut down trees that were dropping limbs. And we cut down a lot of brush. If, if you were in Oklahoma or Arkansas, I tell you, we bush hogged the place. We cut down uh, sumac and other invasive species that had started growing in, in the last five years. We have not maintained it. Some of those, if you had any weeds growing in your yard this year, you know that they grew from one foot to 10 foot in a matter of two or three months. We cut those down. And if you look at the pictures from page four, and page three, you'll see 
that we did not create any additional yard that wasn't already existing. We maintained our yard. So I, I am admitting, I, I, I surrender myself to the town that I cut down brush and I cut down trees that were dead or diseased without permission from the town. I, I don't deny that at all. All I'm saying is that what we did was maintain our yard. Thank you for your answer. I appreciate that. Any please further questions, Commissioner Cloud? No, please continue. Next. Uh, Sarah Nadine. Hi, Mr. Wilson. Hi. You indicated um, at the start when you were speaking that you're not um, I don't remember your exact words, like completely fighting this. Um, so are you opposed to a restoration plan? I mean, is that why you're going through with the appeal or is that something you're open to doing? Well, I was told that I had to appeal the cease and desist order. And I'm not appealing the cease and desist because prior to the town issuing a cease and desist, we had already ceased and desisted. Okay. What I'm saying is that I don't believe that I've done anything outside of not having the permission of the town or the judgment in the view of the town of a arborist or a tree expert telling the town prior to cutting trees that these were trees that needed to be cut or this was just weeds and vegetation, okay? I will, I admit that I cut down a, I'll call it a two foot tree. If you're looking at the house from the valley on the far right hand side, we cut down in the middle of our deck, a large tree that was growing through the deck and causing damage to the deck. I will admit that to the far left-hand side, we cut down a tree that had dropped limbs on our deck and damaged the deck. Outside of that, any tree we cut down, in my opinion and the opinion of my my what I'll call my tree expert, and I do think he's a qualified expert, he's not an arborist, but these trees were damaged, dying, diseased, and were going to continue to deteriorate. While we were there, we cut down, I would suspect, six or seven trees in total that were dead, dying, diseased, or the two foot one that was not dead. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding the last part of what you said that when he was there, you cut down six or seven trees. I mean, obviously a lot, a significantly larger amount of trees were removed than that well, number. So I just, if you could clarify what you just said. I, I, I don't know what was cut down below the fence line which is on the ridge line because unfortunately and I'm not I'm not using this as an excuse I can't walk so I could not go down and see what was cut but to my knowledge we had instructed them to cut down six trees one on the far right hand side when you look at the mountain one on the left-hand side that was dropping limbs on the deck and the rest on the right-hand side when you look at the mountain, or I'm sorry, left-hand side when you look at the mountain, there were disease. Okay, thank you. And I do have um, a question for Garrett. Yes. Um, so in the um, information you provided from the town, um, you know, looking into this matter, um, you indicated that the town had um, stated that it was not an emergency 
um, as some of the trees were not dead or dying um, because they still had vegetation. Did an arborist um, go, I, how was this determined and with regards to all of the trees not necessarily being dead that were cut down? Uh, so there's a few items we can look at. Um, first being the aerial photo from October of last year, which is slide, uh, we can look at slide 19, Shannon. Oh, sorry. sorry, the numbers are over there. I'm yeah. just looking to try to find the numbers. Hang on. So, so this was taken October. So granted, it's a month later than than September. Um, and there would be some trees that would have lost vegetation. Um, however, you can see a lot, a, a fair amount of foliage in the in the canopy at this time. Uh, and when you compare that to after the clearing was done, you can see the bare ground below, um, especially in front of where. Uh, Shannon is pointing, um, that area seems to be the widest swath of clearing. Um, again, th th this is based on an aerial photo. Um, it's not directly from the property line. We, you know, having a before and after of, of the area. So this is the best we're able to do. Um, it does show a large area of clearing um, in that area. You can even see a down tree um, in, in one of the photos. Um, and additionally, uh, um, yeah, that tree number one might have been dead. It might have some heart rot, um, but a number of these trees look, looked uh, fairly healthy. There was no sponging along the edges, um, which normally indicates rot. Um, again, tree number eight had a slit in it, uh, but again, the, the, the main issue being is that staff was not contacted prior to any work being completed. Um, if we look at photo number 31. Um, kind of where Shannon uh, cursor is, you can see that those evergreens are still green. Um, anyone familiar with evergreens, once they're dead, they turn brown. Um, but if they, if they stay green for a little while after, if the tree's still alive, um, and there's additional vegetation on the surrounding brush that can be seen in, in multiple photos, um, that usually once once a tree is dead, it does not leaf. Um, while it's dying, it may still leaf. Um, portions might not, um, which as you can see, you can see leaves on the branches and such. Um, so as I said, um, if, if it's still alive, it still has leaves on it. Um, even when you take it down, the leaves stay on until, you, until either a strong wind or something takes them off. Um, so we did not have an ar arborist on site for this. That's usually um, something in this case that is borne by the property owner um, to certify whether the trees were dead or dying. Um, and I would just like to point out in the regulations um, for the Ridgeline Protection Zone, which is section 26, uh, there's a section for site plan requirements. Um, so if, if someone were to apply for a special permit, um, to, to clear, to do clear cutting. Um, there's a section that states where in the opinion of the reviewing authority, existing vegetation is insufficient to provide adequate screening of visual impact areas or on a particular lot, the applicant shall prepare, prepare a landscape plan specifying the location, number, type, and size of plant and tree material that would be added to the property. The commission may require the applicant to provide field markers depicting the highest elevation of each proposed building or structure, as well as photographs taken from off-site locations within the town of Farmington from which proposed activities within a ridgeline setback area may reasonably be expected to be seen. As stated, no staff was not aware of any work that was being conducted. Um, and if staff had been informed and staff had gone out to the site to inspect the trees to verify whether they were dead or dying at the time, Staff may have either requested a special permit to remove a large number of trees with an accompanying planting plan or require that a certified arborist certify whether the trees are dead or dying. And at that point, if it was a sufficient number, the department might refer it to the Town Plan and Zoning Commission for a special permit if it rose above the selective clear cutting as stated in my presentation. Thank you, I don't have any further questions. Okay, uh, John Schoenhorn is next up. Garrett, may I address what you just said? Um, Mr. Chair, that's your discretion. Yes. 
Okay. Yes, I'm angry. I, I, I okay. say yes because I, I'm anxious I, to hear some kind of evidence that the trees were dead or dying other than hearsay. Go ahead, please. I address that? Yes. Yes. If you look at the pictures that have been taken, we've received a phone call from Bruce Sear with the town uh, building department saying that he had received comment from somebody that we were clear cutting trees. Um, I believe my neighbor had called me about a week prior saying, asking if I had installed solar panels on my home because they were seeing the windows from the uh, original home that looks out over the valley. Um, Bruce Sear asked if we would allow somebody from the town to come up and look at the trees. I believe Garrett came up within the next two or three days. So the trees that you see in the foliage you see on the ground right now is a result maybe five to ten days after the trees were cut or the brush was cut. I don't see green there. It was a lot of dead brush. We had a lot of dead trees. We had a lot of weeds. There were trees that were cut. There were weeds that were cut. We did not clear cut to enhance our view. We maintained our yard to maintain our view. Um, I'm not arguing that I did not get arborists out there. I will argue that the view that you show from Town Farm Road today and the, the view we show from Town Farm Road in 2001 is in the same view. We did not cut down trees to maintain a view. We did not cut down trees to increase our view. We cut down trees that were diseased and dying. We cut down one tree that I know was alive because it was tearing up our deck and damaging the decking around the home that was still existing, the original home. And the other trees were diseased and dying. We have trees out there today that are dropping limbs from the windstorm that we did not cut. You know, we've cut over, like I said, since 2020, We've cut 50 trees down in our yard, some in our backyard. We've cut trees down in this backyard for the last 22 years because they've died. It just, we clear the weeds that were in front of the original home, which showed the glass in the original home, which caused people to take notice of the original home. We've done nothing that wasn't there in 19, 2001. Understood. Nothing. But I do admit we did not have an arborist come out there and look. We did not get the town's permission to do it. I admit that. Understood. Um, Commissioner Schoenhorn, I believe it was your opportunity to ask questions. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start with a couple of questions to, to you, Mr. Wilson. Um, in number eight of your reply or your appeal, you stated that you were aware of no law regulation that would require you to maintain a restricted view of your house from the, uh, uh, from the valley below. Um, it, is that your, really your position? Didn't you just admit to us that when they allowed you to build, the build your home that the Planning and Zoning Commission did not want to your house visible from the valley? Oh, number eight on page one. Yes. This effort is to do on Town Farm Road, though there's no law regards for coast view of a leaky bit home on the mountain. Yeah, what I'm saying is that there's nothing in the code that I'm aware of that says you cannot maintain your view. I there understand. Are, there, I, there, I understand. There's nothing in the code, sir. But didn't you just inform us a few minutes ago that when you built the house, one of the concerns of the Planning and Zoning Commission when they approved your home was that the home, not the the windows in that in the A-frame building, but right. your home not be visible 
from the valley. Isn't that something you expressed to us that the Planning and Zoning Commission expressed to you back in 2002? No, no, that's not what I expressed. What I expressed was that the Planning and Zoning Commission back in 2001, 2002, appreciated our efforts to minimize the view of our home from the valley. They knew by us cutting the top floor off the A-frame home, raising the yard by 12 feet, would raise the sight line such that it would minimize how much my home would be viewed from the valley. I did not say that they asked us to minimize or reduce the view of our home. They appreciated the fact that we were trying to minimize the view. Uh, well, are you also, you're, well, you're, you're saying to us then that the sole concern was they wanted you to take the roof off that house to minimize the view of your house. That's what you're saying? Yes. That's, yes, okay. Then you know you are aware that we have the the entire site plans from your 2002 proposal, correct? Yes. Right. And you're aware you that have the proposed in, site. Excuse you me. have the proposed site plan. Right. That was submitted to the Planning and Zoning Commission for you to get your approval, right? Yes, the proposed site plan, yes. Yeah, and in that included an entire itinerary of the trees on your property, including drawings of what the trees would look like after you built your home, correct? Of the proposed site plan, not the approved site plan. So you have me... the proposed site plan. The only thing we agreed to when we built the home was we would put four evergreen trees in front of the wall in right next to the existing pool on the existing home. We would build a well around the tree that existed between the existing home and the new home and maintain a tree that was split in half already and maintained mm -hmm. by wire to keep it from falling apart. That's the only thing we agreed to. You right, have Mr. a Wilson, site Mr. Wilson, plan. excuse me. You don't excuse have the approved site plan. Okay, so, so let me get this straight. If uh, I'm going to ask if um, Shannon, could you put up Exhibit C, the town Exhibit C, pages two and three, please? Yes, sir. We'll start with that one there. So when you submitted this proposal, this was something that you had uh, your your Our architectural and that was prepared for a presentation to the town planning and zoning commission, correct? Correct. And at the next page, page three, all right, this was what you proposed to the town as to what the foliage and trees would look like after your house was built. Am I correct about that? Well, I, I, I is can't this believe what, sir, that's a yes or no. Wait, no, it's not a yes or no question. Because if you look at the far left of this picture, you have trees that are 40 feet tall. Those 40 foot trees did not exist at the time. You have a bunch of trees to the right that are 40 feet, 50 feet tall that didn't exist at the time. This was an artist rendition by a landscaper of a proposed site plan. We did not guarantee and the town did not ask us to develop this in this manner. The only thing the Planning and Zoning Commission asked us to do was to plant two trees, th four trees, I, I apologize, just to the right or the left on this picture of what you see that white square right in the middle. If you take the pointer to the right square, somebody. Right. See the right square right in the middle, up, right there. That's the existing home. To the left of that, we agreed we would plant four evergreen trees. Behind that, we agreed we would build a 12-foot diameter, six-foot deep tree well to maintain one tree. To the far left of the home, or I'm sorry, the right-hand side of the home, Go to the right hand, no, nope, the first tree to the right hand side was a tree that was a, a Y-shaped tree. That tree was split down the middle 
maintained together by metal wire and the town demanded we keep those trees. That was the only thing that was agreed to with the Planning Zoning Commission when we built this house. So, so as I understand it, you presented this to the Planning Zoning Commission to what? Give them the false impression that this is what it was going to look like when you finished building your home? No, we gave it to them as a proposed plan and they approved an accepted plan. All right. Can I look at the previous uh, picture, page two, please? So as we're looking at the um, the bottom drawing here, all right, the the, yeah. the, the tree. You, can, if we can enlarge this a little bit here on uh, the the lower half of this image. Now he wants to show you the uh, the evergreen trees. Yeah, and and if you'll move it a slightly over, Shannon, so we can see what it says: view line to new house view line to existing house, right? You see where it says that? Yes, I do. So you're telling me that the pine, the evergreen trees and the, no, and the no. deciduous trees that are presented in this image weren't there. This is some kind of an imaginary drawing to that you presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission. No, I'm not. If you If you'll scroll up. All right. Keep scrolling up. What you see is the protect the protected section view projected and the tr true section view. So when you're looking at the view with those four lines in it down below, that's the true section view from the valley, from Town Farm Road, that's what you would see. The pro projected section view is what you would see if you came further over to what would be the, is that north? To the north of the house. Those trees were there to the north in 2001. In 2001. What we're showing you is our attempt to minimize the view of our home. If you look at those lower lines, it shows you what you would have seen had we kept the roof on the house, taken the roof off the house, or built the up, backfilled our land up to the first floor of the original house, attempting to minimize the view from Town Farm Road of the true section line, not the projected section view. All right. All right, Mr. Wilson, you indicated that you had some kind of tree expert take down these trees. Who, who is that? I can't remember his name. What was his name? <coughs> Just some guy Bravo. with a chainsaw? No, it's not some guy with a chainsaw. Ah. It's a tree company who's expert you remember, in Do you remember the name of the company? Trees. He's familiar with the tree line. He's familiar with the ridge line. He's familiar with the tree ordinance and the ridge line ordinance. And what's his what's what's the name of his company? I can't recall right this moment. He was I'll there. He to, was there a uh, month Garrett ago, tomorrow. right? He was I'll there like a month Garrett ago. Tomorrow morning. Right, and was he that? wasn't an arborist, though, was he? I don't know. Do you, do you have him? And, do, haven't I admitted? I've admitted to you. I did not have an arborist come up and look at these trees. Right. I did not have an arborist come up and look at the weeds. I've admitted that. Right, but I'm Mr. not denying that in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, Mr. I, Wilson, I the, the myself at your mercy, John. Uh, okay, I, I, I am not asking you to forgive me for not having an arborist come up. I'm saying I'm maintaining the view of the home. I'm going to interject here. This is not in a view of the home. This is devolved. I'm going to interject as the chair. This is devolved into a shouting match and an argument that is doing nothing other than we're recovering old ground. If we could move along, please. Right. You didn't ask your tree expert to come here tonight to tell us that the trees were dead or dying, did you, sir? No, I did not. Right. Answer. And Mr. Thank Daigle, you. in your opinion, were these trees all dead and dying that you saw lying cut down? All but one. 
No, Mr. That was Daigle. A question that was directed to Mr. Daigle, whose expertise oh, as a whose qualifications as a tree expert have not been established either. Right. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So as I as I stated, I'm not a tree expert, and we did not have an arborist on site during the inspection. Um, while I, I could agree that some of the trees may have been dead or dying, um, the existence of vegetation on the trees indicated that they more than likely were not dead when they were cut down. Um, as, I, as I had stated, we had an aerial photo from October of last year and, in our, and September of this year after the clearing had occurred. Um, from my field experience, again, not as an arborist, I did inspect the trees. There may have been one, uh, there was definitely one tree, I believe it was tree number one, um, that definitely might have had some part rot. And there was tree number eight, which had a crack in it. Um, however, I do not believe that any of the trees that pictured um, had a spongy exterior, which usually indicates the presence of rot of the tree. Um, again, I'm not an arborist, but that is my field experience. Right. Understood. Thank and, you. And and did how many of these trees appear to be to be have a diameter of greater than ten inches? You showed us yeah. some pictures, but of oh. all of the uh, the ones in that entire 14,500 square foot area, how many of the logs that you saw from felled trees appeared to be greater than uh, 10 inches in diameter? Um, I don't believe I'd get, be able to give you an accurate answer for that, John, just due to the fact that this is the ridgeline. Um, it is very difficult and steep to navigate. And as I stated, so these were the, the stumps that I was able to locate, at least that were near um, inaccessible points. Um, other than that, there was a, a bunch of smaller trees that were definitely under the, the uh, 10 inch diameter that were cleared. Um, and I was only including the stumps that I had found that were greater than 10 inches. Um, if you give me one second, let me look through my photos very quickly. Hey, Garrett, may I ask a question? Actually, Mr. Wilson, let's. Okay. Let Mr. Daigle's response to Attorney Schoenhorn's. All right, thank you. Done first so that we don't have a record that is a complete mess. Or sure, I appreciate it. Probably already is. Um, and Commissioner Schoenhorn, I'll, I'll just state that in my opinion, due to the amount of brush that was existing on the property, I don't think I would be able to give you an accurate answer for uh, one way or the other. Um, not the trees weren't felled as whole, some of them were cut up. So it was hard, it's harder to determine without um, going out there and marking, you know, with, with paint or some other marking in order to, to count and determine the length of the trees and all that other information. Um, I wouldn't be able to give you a definite answer at this time. The, was were there more than the ones you just took pictures of the stumps? Um, I believe so. If we look at, um, I'm sorry, picture number thirty-one. There are some uh, evergreen trees that were cut further down um, that I was not able to locate the stumps. I can't, at this point, I can't say for certain whether they're greater than 10 inches or not, but that was higher up on the tree. Um, I don't believe this picture shows it. Um, there was another stump that I had seen further down that I was unable to get to due to, to the brush in the area. Um, and as I stated, it, because as you can see, everything kind of laid on top of each other. Um, I couldn't tell you one way or the other, which, definitely which, which was which. But. Right. And, and in any event, uh, did Mr. Wilson or anyone on his behalf, his tree expert, contact the town to seek advice or inquiry about how to conduct this type of um, cutting? No, we did not. All right. And uh, Mr. Daigle did... Um, in your opinion, does this constitute clear cutting? Uh, yes, as stated in the conclusion, we believe that because this exceeds the limits of selective clear cutting, which limits to a cumulative 10 trees greater than 10 inches in diameter, 
uh, from a 100 square foot area that it does fall under the definition of clear cutting that would have required a special permit and review by the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, including a supplemental planting plan. And does the, um, uh, do the regulations uh, have a specific purpose in conjunction with the statute of preserving the ridgeline for purposes of views from the valley so it does not... Uh, uh, um, it, it has so that it does not um, keep you from seeing my house obscure the view from the valley of the ridge line as opposed to giving uh, 180 degree views from the homeowners on the top of the mountain. Uh, yes, yeah, so under uh, the selective clear cutting, uh, which is article, I'm sorry, um, subsection C D. So Article 2, Section 26, Subsection C, Point D, uh, Selective Clear Cutting. Such cl clear cutting shall not result in the exposure of large areas of the building as viewed from below the ridgeline setback area. And um, did you also prior supply to, when, to us a to list when, of, okay. of the uh, actual list of trees that were on the property that were part of the site plan that was uh, submitted to the Planning and Zoning Commission for its approval? Yes, that, that was uh, part of the special permit application, I believe, which is exhibit uh, D. If you give me one second, one moment to okay. confirm that that's. Yes, it, there was an existing tree key prepared by uh, CR3 site planning and landscape architects that was submitted as part of the 2002 special permit to build the house. And uh, as the assistant, as an assistant town yeah. planner, what is the purpose of submitting that uh, such list to the Planning and Zoning Commission for uh, construction of a house on what would otherwise be a wooded uh, acre or wooded lot? Yes, so uh, as stated in the regulation, um, there are standards under uh, subsection F of the Ridgeline Protection regulation that says standards for granting of a special permit within ridgeline setback areas. Um, the, I'm, I'm sorry, I was quoting the wrong section, John. Subsection K, which is site plan requirements, I'm sorry. Uh, item four states, where in the opinion of the reviewing authority, existing vegetation is insufficient to provide adequate screening, screening of visual impact areas on a particular lot, the applicant shall prepare a landscape plan specifying the location, number, type, and size of plant and tree material that would be added to the property, the commission may require that the applicant to provide field markers depicting the highest elevation of each proposed building or structure, as well as photographs taken from offsite locations within the town of Farmington from which proposed activities within a ridgeline setback area may reasonably expect, be expected to be seen. My uh, inference from that is that uh, in order to meet the standards of the uh, regulation for the ridgeline, the existing vegetation was shown and enumerated so that the commission would have a better idea of the vegetation that was on site. Um, Shannon, could we go down to maybe it's a page. Uh, it might be earlier. I'm sorry. There is a there is a plan that was included in the presentation that shows uh, an aerial view of the proposed landscape, there we go, of the proposed landscaping for the property when this application was submitted to the Plan and Zoning Commission. And, and um, if we're looking towards the, um, I'll call the left side, so the western side of this, uh, could you bring that up a little, enlarge that please? The um, the, the circles that we see around the entire western side here, uh, what are those circles? Some are shaded darker than others. Yes, it does. There was not, I don't believe there's a full um, planting plan, but uh, this diagram calls out uh, bayberry, winterberry, and mountain laurel bushes uh, at uh, 30 inches to 36 inches. Um, and I and then there are also, so there's uh, larger trees, which are shown as uh, sh uh, flowering dogwood and shadblow. 
and uh, there are smaller, darker trees, which I not make out what the intended plant species was at the time. Well, my question has more to do with what is the purpose of submitting this uh, diagram showing various trees in the on the property to, as part of a uh, proposal to the Planning and Zoning Commission? Um, <clears throat> the, the purpose would be that in order to maintain the requirements of the regulation to protect the view from below the ridgeline setback area. Um, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the minutes for this meeting in front of me. Um, based on the height of the trees listed, six to eight feet in height, that might have been proposed plantings um, to, to shade the new home, um, which was behind the ridgeline setback area from below the ridgeline. Um, there is, a, so the existing home, uh, or the, uh, the, the existing home that was on site, the one that was right along the ridgeline, um, that was an existing non-conforming house. There is sections in the regulations that permit a certain amount of expansion of that existing home, um, but there is a requirement that that earth excavation and um, I'm sorry, I did not have it right in front of me. Um, construction relocation. The only trees we're supposed to keep are the only ones not shown on here. Such alteration shall not pro produce a substantial change in appearance or character of the building as viewed from below, below the ridgeline setback area. Um, so that it was most likely to either, to preserve the view that the, the existing house was, or at least the foundation was still there um, and that it would obstruct the view of a new home constructed behind that ridgeline setback area, um, which is close to the 150 foot setback as opposed to the 75 foot setback um, that the existing home was in. Did, did that answer your question, John? I'm sorry. I know I bounced around a few times. Uh, kind of, but let me move, uh, let me move on to a different question. Could you pull up the photo you took from the Polo Grounds, please? Yes, that would be... The last photo. Uh, yes. The, okay, this one? That worked. Page, that yeah. One. Is that yeah. one work, John? Right. Yes. Um, and we can see, if you make it slightly larger than it is right now, please, if you just pull it in a bit. Right, and if we see the, um, the the large glass windows in the middle there, uh, does it appear that the uh, the cutting of trees went far beyond the area around the glass windows, which is what I think Mr. Wilson was referring to? He wanted to maintain the view from those windows. Yes, it extends to this area and this area as well. Um, I believe Garrett, can you go to page three of our exhibit to compare those? Whoa, 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 one at a time. The question is directed to Mr. Daigle and Mr. Wilson. I'll give you a chance to respond once Thank the answer is concluded. Otherwise, we're going to be here all night, which I can't. Thank you. Do. I apologize. Uh, um, John, is that right if I switch to a different photo? Yes, please. I'm just going to switch to the aerial photo. Um, so this building right here, uh, where the cursor is, that is where those windows are, and they face off in this direction. And the red is where staff believes all the clearing took place. So in this area here, in front of the building, and then off to the side here as well. All right, so it was more than just the area in front of those glass windows that Mr. Wilson was referring to. Correct. Substantially more? Correct. All right, and... Um, I have one last question for Mr. Wilson. Can you explain why you did not submit um, a, um, a plan for uh, restoration even after you were cited up until today? Why you haven't proposed or submitted anything through today? Why I didn't submit a plan for restoration? Yeah. Because that's what I'm sitting here doing today is saying that I messed up. I did not have an arborist. I don't think I am required to submit a plan for restoration. You keep focusing on things that are irrelevant. You, you're focusing on a, a, if you go back to, if you will, please, whoever's in charge of pictures, 
to the site plan that shows the tree plantings that were submitted as proposed tree plantings. That one. That is a proposed tree planting. That's a proposed site plan. What's interesting about this proposed site plan are the only trees that we were required to keep or plant are the only trees that aren't on this site plan. If you go back to the far left-hand side where the existing home was, go down to where it says uh, the garden area, the little dots, right up, up, up. Further up. east. Go up right there, the garden, nope, nope. Go up a little more where it says garden area. That was the original pool, okay? If you see, we built stairs going down to that area. We were required to plant four evergreens in front of that wall. If you go back behind that wall to the right, there's a tree in a tree well that we were required to keep according to planning zoning. That large one right in the middle of the yard, right there. Nope, down, right there. And then if you go down even further, keep going down, uh, kind of the larger one right in the middle. No, nope, up a little bit. That one we were required to keep. That's the one that was split in half in a Y held together by wire. Those were the only trees that were required of us by planning and zoning. The rest of this planning proposed planting was not required of us. We right. planted the four trees in front of the wall. We built a 12 foot by six foot deep tree well to maintain the yard, the tree in the middle of the yard. And the other tree died about four years ago and had to be taken down before it fell on our house. We, and I would also like to see Garrett, if you have someplace on there, a overhead shot of the trees on my property of 2018. I know you have one from 2020. Do you have, have one from 2018? Can you give me one minute to pull up the GIS? We have 2016 and 2019. I wish you knew, I knew you had all this stuff. I would have pulled it up myself. Because in 2019, 2020, we had to cut down over 40 trees in our yard. Now, do you see 40 trees in my front yard that need to be cut down? Which is your front yard, Mr. Wilson? Facing to the Eli right. Road or to the, the right? right. To Facing the right. east. On Eli Road. Okay. I had to cut 40 trees down because they were diseased and dying. Now, you can't tell from this view behind my house to the left, if you zoom in to the left there, you can't tell any difference from the front and the back of what trees were dead or dying. In fact, if you look in front of the house, the existing house, the large white square area, no, go back to the left, go back to the left, look at the large area in front of the white house, the white square. That's the yard that existed where you're saying I cut down all these trees back in 2018 or 2009 you're looking at. There were no trees there. I didn't clear cut trees. I cut weeds down. It's all the way from, you keep moving the picture, but it's all the way from the bottom part of this photograph of this, my yard, to the top part. We haven't cut any trees down that existed. M we Mr. cut Wilson, down weeds and bushes. Right, Mr. And Wilson, the problem. Can you just I'm not Please let Mr. Wilson finish and maintain my yard. Okay, I take it that finishes the answer. Is there another question, please? Yes. The, this is a winter picture. I cannot tell from this, Mr. Wilson, whether no there are trees. I are can't help your pictures. 
you, you do admit that you had someone cut down a large number of trees, even if you haven't been able to go back there to see what he did, right? I admit I had someone cut down a number of trees. I wouldn't call it a large number of trees. I had a, people cut down a large number of trees in my front yard, but not in the backyard. I had somebody cut down brush and weeds. And, and you don't you have anyone... You go you in the backyard anyone, of my... Talking you go, once. Let me finish my answer. If you go in the backyard of my home, on the left-hand side of that white square, and you look at the ground right now, you won't see tree stumps because there were no trees there. And this is the view we had in 2001, the view we had in 2010, and the view I have today. Well, thank you. Uh, I'll just hear another Wilson, question. Isn't it? Isn't we it have true other that members who would like to ask questions as well? I believe. Mm -hmm. I I would like to. The one is my turn. <laughs> I'm sorry, who just asked? Well, Commissioner well, Schoenhorn, can we move on to the next questioner, please? Or, or do you have more? Um, can you did I ask not you, make uh, your okay. tree expert available for uh, to testify or speak on your behalf. Is that correct, Mr. Wilson? Yes, I will. No, today, right now at your hearing. Well, he's not here, no. Did you get a statement from to. him? No, right but, now, no. Did you get a, a, an, a some kind of an invoice, how many trees he was going to cut down and that you would pay him for that? No. All right, I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Next. Steve Walsh. I don't have any additional questions, thank you. Okay, Bob Wiener. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wilson, I'll, I have yes. like, very few questions for you. Uh, let me return briefly to something Ms. Nadine and Mr. Schoenhardt asked you. Um, the first thing you said tonight when you began your presentation was that you agree with the cease and desist order. Yes. Um, what is it that you're asking us to do? You've already pleaded guilty, it seems to uh, me. Well, well, according what, what is it you want us to do? According to my understanding, and if I misunderstand, I apologize. My understanding was the town asked me to stop cutting any trees. And as a result of that, if I did something wrong, I am to submit a remediation plan. I am saying that I may have cut one, maybe two, but I'm admitting to one tree that I know was living and alive, but growing through the middle of my deck and dropping limbs on my deck and damaging my deck, I cut it down. I'm, I'm just saying, I don't think I should be required to remediate that. I okay, am so, so that, so that is, is that all this is about? You don't wanna to have to do any restoration? Uh, saying that nice. I am maintaining the yard that I had in 2001, the yard I had in 2010, and the yard I have today. I'm maintaining my yard. That's what okay. I mean. That's what I'm attesting to. Do, do you do you think you are legally entitled to preserve the view you had in 20 years ago today, even though trees grow and in, uh, in, in the interim? Is that is that your if, argument? If if I did not go below my property line and cut trees down that blocked my view, yeah, I'm maintaining that I'm entitled to maintain my view. Okay, uh, uh, one more question, and, and I will stop. We've been at this an awful long time already. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, did the cutting, brush clearing, et cetera, you do? I don't care what your motivation was. Did it yeah. improve your view? No. It didn't improve your view? Wait, wait, let me take that back. Yes, it improved my view from in front of the existing home, where you could see the windows out yeah. from the windows I showed you. Which, which is, which is part, of, part of your property. And page uh, seven of my exhibit. Yeah. So it did improve your view. And those were, but but I did not cut trees down. I cut down weeds. Okay. How, how do you explain the, the photos that Mr. Daigle uh, submitted that show, I don't remember how many, 10 or a dozen tr uh, uh, tree stumps? 
I don't know that those trees were in front of that window. I don't know that. All I know is if you go back to page three of my exhibit, and you look at the picture to the right and the picture to the left, there are no trees in front of the windows, which are at the bottom of the white section. The white section is the A-frame of the house. The darker section under the white section are the windows. Those windows have been there since the 1970s, and they're there today. They were there in 2001. They were there in 2008. We let the weeds grow up. I have weeds outside of my bedroom window that have grown 10 feet this year. I pulled them out this year. I didn't know it's against the law to pull weeds and cut weeds and, 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 and what's the word I'm looking for? Um, um, well, it's, and, it, 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 it's, 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 not, it's not, so we don't have to belabor that. Right. I did not cut trees down in front of that building. It's not the issue, but... Now, I, okay. and, you know, if I cut trees down someplace I wasn't supposed to, I'm willing to live up to that. Okay. I'm saying yes. that when people are accusing me of cutting down to enhance my view, I did not do that. I am maintaining the view I've had since 2001 okay. when I bought this property. I, I'm not interested. I don't, I, I don't think it's our business. Mr. Wilson, I don't, I don't think it's our business what was in your heart when you did it. The fact is trees were cut down and your view was enhanced. Aren't, aren't, aren't both of those things true? No, I'm, a, I'm agreeing that their trees were cut down without the permission of the town. I'm agreeing with that. Okay. Right. I, that, that, that's I, all have I, have. No, I have no problem okay. with that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman, you're the last uh, for questions. I, I think we have gone around the circle on sufficient occasions, and I don't have any questions from Mr. Wilson. I do have a question for the sta town staff, however. If Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson is not disputing the cease and desist order. He is ceasing and desisting. The next steps would be for him to submit a special permit in a remediation plan. Correct, to the, to the town plan and zoning commission. Understood. And if the town says your remediation plan, if, for example, Mr. Wilson were to say, pick a number, I will plant four trees, three trees, six trees, whatever the number may be, a remediation plan designed to compensate not for the weeds and the junk and the invasive species that were removed, but for the actual trees. And the town was to reject that and, and, and require more, uh, either more remediation or a significantly more cost to Mr. Wilson. I don't know the answer to this off the top of my head, would Mr. Wilson be able to appeal from such an order? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it would be a decision of the Town Plan and Zoning Commission that right. is appealable. So the Town Planning and Zoning Commission would decide on the remediation plan, and Mr. Wilson would have an opportunity to agree with or to disagree with and appeal that plan. Yes, but that would be to uh, the Superior Court, not to the Zoning Board of Appeals, just as a point of clarification. Okay, as long as he has a remedy, because it sounds to me like Mr. Wilson is willing to engage in a reasonable amount of remediation for taking down trees in a ridgeline zone without the without consulting with the town. <clears throat> is that correct, Mr. Wilson? Look, I, I apologize. Say it one more time. Is it correct that you are willing to undertake some remediation for taking down trees within the ridgeline zone? as long as that remediation plan is reasonable. Yes. Thank you. That's all I have. I believe at this point we need a motion. I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman. And I move that the findings of the uh, planning department finding a violation of the Farmington Ridgeline Protection Zone regulation under Article 2 Section 26 be affirmed and that the, uh, the uh, appellant be required to submit a restoration plan within 10 days 
according to the regulations that uh, will meet the, the planning departments uh, to, to, to their satisfaction that it will uh, restore the ridgeline to as much as possible to its prior uh, view before the cutting occurred. I would further move that if the appellant does not submit the plan within the 10 days that the, uh, as per the cease and desist order, that uh, fines of $150 per day be uh, imposed until the uh, plan is submitted and approved. Is there a second of that motion or motions? Mr. Chairman, is Mr. Wilson, am I allowed to address that at all? Not at this juncture, Mr. Wilson. We need okay. a second. Second. Discussion. In order, please, and succinctly. Yes, sir. Uh, Chris Cloud. Uh, nothing further. I think we've talked this to death. I'm good. Sarah Nadim. I'm going to vote to affirm um, the town cease and desist order. Mr. Wilson has um, admitted that he uh, went ahead and cut the trees without following the proper uh, procedures uh, with regards to the ridge line. Um, and from what Mr. Dangle has indicated, there were uh, through the photos that the town has provided us today that um, some of the trees that were cut down uh, were not dead and appeared to be living at the time, also in violation. Um, so for those reasons, I'll be voting to um, affirm or uphold the town cease and desist. Thank you. John Schoenhorn. Um, my comments came mostly through questions. I'll just note that I would also draw the inference that we don't know who did any of this cutting. We don't have anyone's word about uh, whether any of these trees needed to be taken down. Um, and we don't even have the name of that person. So I would also affirm the town's uh, position and the cease and desist order. Okay, Steve Walsh. Uh, no additional comments. Bob Wiener. I would have preferred a motion to simply affirm the town's determination and let the process play out from there. Uh, but I don't disagree that Mr. Schoenhorn, I think, accurately laid out what the process would be. So uh, I'm going to be in favor of the motion. And Chair Callahan. The motion is phrased as I do not support. I would support a finding uh, that the cease and desist order be upheld. But I do not support the motion as phrased or the fines that uh, the motion would seek to impose on Mr. Wilson. Subject to that, I believe we can move at this point to a roll call vote. On the motion that is. Okay, so on the motion as stated. Um, am, am I not allowed to ask a question or comment on this? Not at no. this point, the public portion of the hearing. Okay, is thank you. And, I, and Mr. Wilson, I, I, I believe at this point no, I'm agreeing with everything you're saying. I'm only asking if you could give me an extension of 10 days to maybe 20 or 30 days because of the holidays. But that's fine. You got to do what you got to do. That would have been certainly reasonable, but that was not the motion that was made. Well, I wasn't allowed to address the motion. Understood. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote for the motion as presented. Chris Cloud. I I'm didn't sorry, hear you, didn't Mr. Hear Cloud. Uh, affirmative. Uh, Sarah Nadim. Aye. Uh, John Schoenhorn. Aye. Steve Walsh. Aye. Uh, Bob Wiener. Uh, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to vote no for the sole purpose of allowing us to entertain a motion to give uh, Mr. Wilson 20 uh, days instead of 10. And uh, uh, Chair Callahan. No. But it passes. Yeah, it passes as presented. So we have four, four affirmative and two against. So it passed. 
All right, I need two more motions. One is a motion to approve the 220, 2023 meeting schedule. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve the 2023 meeting schedule. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Somebody's making too much noise. Somebody's making a lot of noise. If, if people who are not speaking could mute themselves, please. The next um, item that we need to deal with is the approval of the minutes of the October 17th, 2022 ZBA meeting. May I have a motion to approve those minutes, please? So moved. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. May I have a motion to adjourn? No, nope, right. Mr. Chair, sorry. We need to Where continue the second item from the agenda, please. Uh, the oh, applicant I'm did sorry. not. No, nope, that's Rivera. okay. She never, uh, she never called in and joined the meeting, so we will follow up with her. But if we could continue to the... Uh, where am I? December meeting. We're only in November. That's fine. Do you need a motion and a vote in order to continue it to the December meeting? Yes. And specifically the December 19th meeting via Zoom. All right. I will make a motion to move the application for a variance of Jennifer Rivera to the December 19th, 2022 meeting of the ZBA. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Is okay. there anything else before we entertain a motion to adjourn? No, sir, not on our end. May I have such a motion, please? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thanks Thank for coming.